الحمد لله حمدا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فقد وصلنا بفضل الله عز وجل إلى شرح مقدمة ابن تيمية ابن تيمية رحمه الله شرح محمد بن صالح بن عثيمية رحمه الله تعالى We have completed the three categories of Tawheed Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed al-Luhiyya, Tawheed al-Asma'u al-Sifat And we went over the different innovations and how they were introduced and uh, the, the gradual phases that they uh, went through until they reached the point where they started speaking about Allah Azza wa Jal and attributing things to Him that, that they think is fit and whatever they didn't think is fit they denied it and they went on some <coughs> horrible journey uh, and uh, the Shaykh reminded us that this is the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that part of the <coughs> part of the preservation of this deen <coughs> is that Allah will assign a group of people upon the truth who will always uh, explain it whenever somebody comes with an innovation somebody will be there to explain the falsehood in it to uh, clarify the misconception and to present the people with the truth and this is all part of the preservation uh, that Allah Azza wa Jal has promised for this particular religion uh, whether it's the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, both have been preserved that's why not any statement that it is attributed to the Prophet وسلم, can be accepted until we verify that this hadith or this narration is authentic meaning the chain of narrators are known to be trustworthy people with good memory and what have you. So not anyone can come and say, Oh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, Don't drink water. Somebody can say that. You can't say that in Islam. <laughs> say, prove it to me. Tell me this narration, where it is, who narrated the hadith, and the people in the chain. If he cannot present that, case closed. So, subhanAllah, any, any other man, people can, uh, can, can claim anything. They say, yeah, such and such person said that. You can't really verify. This is not the case with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tayyip. Qawl al-Mu'allif rahimahu Allah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now this statement, uh, which is considered as a verse in the Qur'an according to some scholars, and it is considered that it is not a verse in the Qur'an according to other scholars. Even the Fatiha. But that's a whole other discussion which we will not present now. The bottom line of this is, uh, now this is the statement of Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. This is the initiation of the book of Ibn Taymiyyah. Because <coughs> in the beginning it was only an introduction. We have not, we have not quoted the Shaykh yet. Salam. Now we're beginning to quote the Shaykh Ibn Taymiyyah, which is the Metin, the original book he put together, which is very small. <coughs> This is what he began now, Shaykh bin Uthameer rahimahullah will explain it word by word, the whole thing. So have patience, this requires patience and, and yani, uh, long, <coughs> yani, you have to open your mind. Because we will be going into the uh, very detail of things and, and yani, Allah mustaan. Al-Sharh, al-bida'atu bil-basmalati hiya sha'nu jami' al-mu'allifin, iqtida'an bi kitab Allah. حيث أنزل البسملة في ابتداء كل سورة واستنادا إلى سنة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم He said beginning with the basmala is the affair of all those who author books all those who write books and they are following with that uh, book of Allah Azza wa Jal because he Allah Azza wa Jal had revealed the basmala it's called the basmala by the way Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is called basmala so become familiar with that particular term uh, Allah has revealed it in the beginning of every surah except Surah At-Tawbah what's another name for Surah At-Tawbah? Surah At-Tawbah has another name Bara anyways that's Bara hey. innocence because it begins Bara'atun innocence anyway, to declare your يعني, lack of affiliation يعني, خلص, you're breaking the ties you know, I'm, I'm innocent for you. It's called Ibrahim li abihi wa qawmihi innani bara'um mimma ta'budun. Allah says, Ibrahim told his father and his people, I am innocent from that which you worship besides Allah. So this is in terms of, of declaring innocence, meaning there's no association between us. We are on, on different levels, in different 
mindsets. Tayyib. So Allah began every surah in the Quran with the Basmala, even the Fatiha. But whether it is part of the Fatiha or not is where the scholars have differed. But we, they all agree that this is part of the, uh, this is the beginning of the Fatiha is with Basmala. And this is the affair with all the surahs except Surah at tawbah وَاسْتِنَادًا إِلَى سُنَّةِ الرَّسُولِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And also following the way of the, of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. When he would write letters to the kings inviting him to Islam, he would also be, begin his letter with بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ طيب وعراب البسملة ومعناها تكلم فيها الناس كثيرا uh, This is going to be rough Because now we're going to be dealing with the Arabic grammar Which is not Not the easiest thing to discuss This is very يعني, uh, Extensive In terms of breaking it down I don't know whether we should bypass it We will go for it inshallah Allah musta'an. If something If you don't understand something Don't worry about it Okay, because this is really يعني, for those who know the Arabic language and uh, myself and even some of the brothers here probably are, are not there. So don't be bothered with the fact that you may not understand something. This is grammar. But we will do the, the job anyways. Maybe Allah Azza wa Jal will benefit from it. طيب وعراب البسملة ومعناها تكلم فيه الناس كثيرا وفي متعلقها وأحسن ما يقال في ذلك أنها متعلق متعلقة بفعل محذوف متأخر مناسب للمقام. فإذا قدمتها بين يدي الأكل يكون التقدير بسم الله آكل وإذ وبين يدي القراءة يكون التقدير بسم الله أقرأ. He says إعراب which is basically given the word it is grammatic it's it's grammatical grammatical position in the sentence like you have verb and noun and adjective and adverb what have you uh, in in the same sense in the in the Arabic there's فعل فاعل مفعول به and صفة and what have you from the what is the word in the sentence doing is it describing something? It is an action? Is it a letter? You know what I'm saying? Or an article and what have you. <laughs> he said many have spoken about the Arab of the of Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And he said the best thing that is said is that it is it is attached to a hidden verb. To a hidden verb that has been postponed or delayed and that is relevant to the situation. I know this sounds very crazy, but what is understood is this following. Meaning, whenever you say Bismillah Rahman Rahim, there's an actual verb that is hidden. And it is only understood based on your action. So he said, if, one, if somebody wants to eat, and he says Bismillah, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, meaning I am eating or drinking in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Even if it's not there, I am eating, I am reading, and likewise, if somebody wants to read, and it begins with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, meaning in the name of Allah I read. So there's always a verb, I read, I eat, I you know, sleep, whatever thing you want to do before Basmala will do and what have you. Anytime you do the Basmala, in your mind, this is why you're saying it. And the verb is not present in the actual Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, it's not there, but it's understood. Now this is يعني, part of the, uh, the grammar of the Arabic language, it's something called taqdeer. Something that is understood or hidden. It is not really there, but you understand from the structure of the sentence that there's something that is يعني, as a passive. In English they call it the passive uh, sentence. Uh, and that's like for example, uh, the water was, uh, or no, you say, uh, he was beaten by two men, or he was beaten to death. By who? It doesn't say. But you understand from the term, or from the sentence, that someone did the action of the beating. And the result of this person was beaten. Even if you don't know who it is, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, Muntaz. نقدره فعلا لأن الأصل في العمل الأفعال للأسماء. And the reason why we say the hidden thing is a verb is because the principle pertaining to action is that they are verbs and not nouns. They are verbs and not nouns. ولهذا كانت الأفعال تعمل بلا شرط والأسماء لا تعمل إلا بشرط. And this is why verbs only they work with no condition. And function with no condition, whereas names only function with a condition. لأن العمل العمل أصل في الأفعال فرع في الأسماء. Because action uh, or doing something is part. No, uh, the action is part of the verb, and it is only a branch of the nouns. Again, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, and the reason why we say he said it is a verb that is hidden and understood but it is delayed remember we said it is delayed 
It is not in the beginning. Meaning you don't say, Aqra'u Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Aqra'u. He says the reason why I do that الأولى ونقدره متأخرا لفائدتين الأولى الحصر لأن تقديم المعمول يفيد الحصر فيكون بسم الله أقرأ بمنزلة لا أقرأ إلا بسم الله ما شاء الله أو إلا بسم الله The first reason why we will say that it is hidden yet delayed is in order to give us the understanding of exclusivity حصر which is exclusivity and that is basically when the thing that is supposed to be put in the beginning is delayed or is put in the end this indicates exclusivity this is so meaning if I say in the name of Allah I read it's as if I'm saying I only read in the name of Allah remember this is the same reason why we say إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ it is only you we worship and it is only you we seek assistance from and you don't say na'buduka wa nasta'inuka although this is possible linguistically but in terms of exclusivity we, when you say يعني, uh, we said we gave the example before remember if I say for example I'm going to the market you understand that I'm going to the market I may stop somewhere I may go to the restroom first I may chit chat with a couple of brothers on the way there then I, but the bottom line is I'm going to the market if I say to the market I am going you say you'll think I'm going straight to the market it's stronger in terms of presentation and this is called exclusivity and this is the same thing that's why he said we delay it rather than put it in the beginning in order to mean I do not read except in the name of Allah and I do not eat except in the name of Allah Wallahu a'lam الثانية تيمنا بالبدء باسم الله سبحانه وتعالى also the second reason is because uh, in order to keep the yameen now you know the Prophet used to like the yameen in everything so he said it is more befitting for the name of Allah to be on the right and then the verb to be delayed Rather than putting the verb before the name of Allah. MashaAllah. Tayyip. وَنُقَدِّرُهُ خَاصًا لأن الخاص أدل على المقصود من العام إذ من الممكن أن أقول التقدير بسم الله أبتدئ لكن بسم الله أبتدئ لا تدل على تعيين المقصود لكن بسم الله أقرأ خاص والخاص أدل على المعنى من العام And we also make it specific We say it is hidden yet it is specific about a particular action or a particular verb because that, that which is more يعني, that which is more uh, specific is more is better than w- w- what is general so for example he said instead of saying that I begin the name of Allah and basically any action you do there's a beginning in it because if you say I begin in the name of Allah you, to drink and I begin in the name of Allah to read he said but we say that it is more specific meaning I drink or I eat or I read is better than saying that I begin because I begin is general and the actual verb is more specific so we favor the verb over the uh, the specific over that which is general you with me? طيب. now you see how imagine that the scholars just for you to know what the scholars are just in case you had a misconception about the scholars these brothers the Akhi, will explain this all from here no need for references no need for books of course they may study at home but by, by default the scholars know all this language aspect of things the Islamic the legal the what have you fiqh hadith seerah mashallah yani ajeeb may Allah Azza wa Jal yani raise our status and make us close to the scholars tayyib lafzul jalala now learn this term whenever there is Allah you try not to call it Allah because it may be misunderstood if specifically in when you language wise so if you say for example bismillah you say bis ba harf jar ism ism majrur Allah you don't say Allah ism majrur Allah is a noun you understand what I'm saying because he, Allah Azza wa Jal is not so the, the scholars say you call that particular Allah lafzul jalala lafzul jalala lafz yani the term jalala is honor so you are referring to the term Allah but you will not be using it specifically in order not to put it in the grammar and that may be yani degrading it might not be appropriate to say Allah is a you know verb or Allah is a noun and what have you because Allah is Allah but the term the, the name Allah is a noun so you call it lafzul jalala ilmun alamun ala nafsillahi azza wa jal it is a noun proper noun uh, about referring to Allah azza wa jal himself and no one 